Meeting will come to order. It's six. What time is it? Six fifty-one. Six fifty-one on Tuesday, July fifteenth, two thousand fourteen. Stand for a moment of silence. Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Bast. Cassatt? Here. Mope? Here. Sosar? Here. Mundy? Here. First on our agenda, approving the minutes of the previous meeting, June 17, 2014, for the work session and the June 17, uh, 2014 regular meeting. Present it? I present. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Meeting. Minutes passed. Proclamations, communications, none. Courtesy the floor regarding matters on the agenda only. Grace Kuzel. Um, not to be nasty and not to be nitpicking, but you know, maybe you better throw both of these applications out. Because you've got the PPL one has a date that it takes effect as of June. I can't tell if that's 18th or 16th, 2014. You've got the other one with Mary Ellen on, and if you read it very closely, it says that you've got 65000 but you're going to be responsible. Where are you getting the money from if there's an overrun? If there's a what? An overrun of the project. Now, if this was submitted in 2000, what would you say, 11? 12? All right. Now, we know costs do increase. So now, has that been taken into effect? You better take a look at this application before you just approve it. And I can't believe, who would have put this before you with these things in here? Are you talking about 83 and 84, Grace? I'm sorry, I'm, what? Are you talking about uh, resolutions 83 and 84? 84. Yeah, actually I am. Because actually these are both. Well, because there are problems with 83 as well. Yeah, and it, it's really pretty bad that anybody will put these in. This is already evidently done and signed with PPNL because it says it took effect June 18th or 16th. I won't swear to that one. I can't tell if that's an eight or a six, so forgive me. And when you do have, it may have well have been applied when Mary Ellen was here, the other one, but the dates are wrong. And, and this was presented to you people to vote on. So before you vote on it, just in case the cost exceeds the 65000 where are you getting the rest of the money from? Right. Do you have any guarantee? Well, that's okay. what we'll discuss with the chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're talking about the Norman Tarantino. Uh, one of the questions I have about this uh, automated red light enforcement, is that going to be a unit that will give tickets automatically if people or just blow the light without anybody there, or is it just to improve the lighting, the stop signs at the intersections? That will ask the chief when he comes up too. Because I think if it's going to be an automatic enforcement and will issue an automatic lights that's going to give the issue tickets, I think it's something that the city shouldn't be doing because a lot of municipalities are phasing that those units out. There's been a lot of problems with them. There's been a lot of headaches that they've caused. And I think it's something we really don't need to get our hands involved in this particular point. So if it's to issue a ticket automatically, we shouldn't be getting into that genre at this point in time. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, D. D. Dekas is concerning ordinance 2014-10. First of all, I do believe we should have on-street parking on, on uh, Chestnut Street, and actually it could be both south and north side of it. The part that bothers me is it suggests that it should be non-metered. The trouble is that parking spaces beyond Chestnut Street are metered, and so you can't have spaces further away metered and the ones that are close non-meter because you'll have everybody competing for the Chestnut Street ones. And 
also take away from the garage, which is an income making thing. So if you're gonna put them there, you gotta put meters. And you might as well add South Laurel Street too between Chestnut and Mine while you're at it. Because again, that's more spaces. When they build that garage, we're not gonna have enough parking downtown. Rebuild it. I, yeah, I understand your concerns, Steve. Oh. And we really do need more spaces there, but if you, somehow they should be metered if ones further away are metered. Or else you make the ones further away non-metered also. Right. Which ones are you talking about that are further away? Along Wyoming Street and Alaro. Beyond Chestnut, there's, me there's meters. On Chestnut Street? No, not on Chestnut. Alaro and Wyoming between Chestnut and, and Juniper. There's meters. Like in front of uh, the Episcopalian Church. Okay, yeah, in front of the church. Okay, there. and that's Chestnut. So that whole block is metered. So if we have the street before it non-metered, that would make no sense. Either you, everybody has meters or nobody has meters beyond a certain point. Okay. But we should have the parking. I think the parking is a great idea. We really do need the parking, but you have to be consistent on right. how you charge for the parking. Thank you. Uh, this is regarding Ordinance 2014-8 for the Annual Plan for Community <laughs> Planning well, and we Urban and Development later. Plans for HUD. Um, how are we, are, are we still going to get, uh, be able to apply for more grant money in terms of when we get the comprehensive plan updated? Or is it going to be, you know, just for this, what's remaining from 2013 carried over to this year or from 2014 carried over to 2015. I'm not sure I, how that. I, Fallon is here and probably could answer that. I think if I understand correctly, and you might want to come on up and answer this, Fallon. As far as with the amounts for the, this is from 2011, okay. so is that going to be carried over to 2014 or is it going to be 2015? For this particular ordinance, only these amounts will be carried to 14. Okay. Only that, nothing else. For 14, we've, we're just awaiting our um, grant allocation from HUD. We haven't received it for this year yet. We're mm -hmm. still waiting. Okay. That'll be more grant money coming through. All right. And but so that'll be more for 15, not for 14. It'll be money for 14, and then we'll do our budget for 15. I'm actually working on our 2015 budget right now. Okay. Okay, but if, like, say, for example, if council, you know, directs In front the, of the mic. Okay. Say if, say if council directs the planning commission to uh, update the, you know, the comprehensive plan, which would take, well, I'd say a year, maybe two years max. Um, how would that affect as far as once that budget is obtained for, you know, like say for 2015 or 2016, once, you know, like the monies, where, would that alloc be allocated towards this funding or would it be for, for separate funding? Separate, it would be separate, separate for future years. Okay. All right. Thank you, Phil. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thank Go you. ahead, Teddy. Ted Sherrock, Hazleton. Um, I'd have one request that when any of these parking uh, issues that come up, you're talking about an area where we have a lot of high rises and I hear no conversation with the housing authority. Maybe it might be beneficial you get all the parties on the same page, communications. Uh, we're gonna, we're might, gonna get them for the next meeting. Help. Uh, uh, my next okay. question was, and I respectfully uh, imagine the chief could answer it when it gets to it. I noticed they're changing um, they're going from 45 caliber handguns to nine millimeters. What's going, I'd be curious what's happening, what's going to happen with the old firearms and uh, uh, disposal or will they be sold? Chief and also how up. much uh, ammunition on the 45 caliber is presently on hand and how will that be, be yeah. uh, dispersed of two? Good question. Thank you. Good Thanks. question. Thank you, Teddy. Any other questions? Okay, we'll move on to uh, old business ordinances, ordinance 2014-8, amending the annual plan for the community planning and development programs of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for fiscal year 2014. 
Second reading. I'll present. Second. On the question? <coughs> Just real quick, Fallon. Uh, we've had discussions in your office before. There's, there's no hope at this point for this year for uh, the programs that we had discussed to help to help kids in this area. Okay, there are people that, that I, I need to get in touch with you about to make sure that that, that has an opportunity to go through. Um, if it's not gonna go through right now, I can't do anything about it, but um, I, you know, there are, there are a lot of kids in town who uh, can benefit from some programs that uh, uh, we, I've discussed with Fallon. Uh, in as far as mentoring programs, mentoring programs, uh, kids that are at risk, and it would seem to me that if a kid is, is uh, and we're talking teenagers, that are interested in improving themselves and doing better, that we, we, we try our best to come up with some cash uh, to try to help on out. So I would still ask if we could uh, and, and try to keep them on, on the, on, on the uh, front burners and maybe look for some guardian angels if we possibly could throughout this town. There's a $30,000 need to, to help out 30 kids who are looking for mentoring so that they don't run the risk of getting into trouble. And, and I was hoping the community development could help there, but next year. Thank you. Yeah, please consider. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Uh, third reading? I'll present. Second. On the question? Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Next is 2000, ordinance 2014-9, uh, an ordinance to authorize the erection of a stop sign at 19th and P Street. Uh, second reading. Present. Second. On the question. Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Uh, third reading. Present. I'll second. On the question, roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Next is resolution 2014-77, and we're in the audit for 2013, 14, and 15. I'll present. Second. Oh, it's tabled. We have to remove it. Oh, that's right. We have to take it off the table. Okay. Well, uh, you... I'll, I'll make a motion to take it I'll off the table. I'll make a motion to take it off the table. Motion to take it off the table. Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Uh, okay, it's uh, resolution L, present resolution 2014-77. I'll second it. On the question? Uh, we've got to fill in. We've got to fill yeah, in. Yeah, we got to fill in the blanks. Who we want? Uh, who you want to be the auditor? Yes. I'll make a motion to award the contract to SB and Company for awesome. the first year is 35905, second year is 36976, third year is 38172. I'll second. On the question? I just have one or two comments. I, I know uh, we have a local. Uh, accounting firm. Their bid was 45.9. Mm -hmm. 
uh, for three years, and the first year savings would be ten thousand, almost ten thousand dollars. The total savings over three years is twenty six six forty seven for the life of the contract. So, you know, looking looking at uh, out for the taxpayer of Hazelton City, I think we. We owe it to the people of Hazleton. I know this is a local firm, and if it was a closer difference, I'd say I'd say we we'd go with the local firm. But uh, we have to look at the savings that we're going to have. Any other questions? No, I agree. It's the savings that I was considering as well. And, and it's no reflection on, on Dennis Moore or, 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 or his the work that he has done. I'm I'm just concerned of them coming in to start fresh. At this late in time. Well, they, they said they could get it. They'd have no problem. Well, I, um, I did address that to them, Jeff, know, which I'm is a good concern. I agree <coughs> with you. And but they said they'd have no problems, which I'm hoping they're men of their word. <laughs> Hopefully, they'll have no problems. So that's my only concern. <laughs> yeah, I know we had we've had problems in the past. And I, honestly, we haven't had our budget last year started really until October. And we're, right. we're not pointing so. the finger at anybody yeah, as yeah. far I mean, as circumstances just happened that nobody could yeah, predict. We're, we're not, you know, blaming anybody for when we got our audit last year. I mean, everybody was pointing fingers at each other. So uh, Dennis was pointing fingers at the administration. The administration was pointing fingers at at Dennis more, but. This is a, a significant savings, and uh, we have to look at that. Uh, any other questions? Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next is ordinance, new business ordinances. Ordinance 2014-10, an ordinance allowing street parking on Chestnut Street. First reading. Present. Second. On the question, we could we could once we even if we approve this we could add meters later. So yes. we, we have that option. I just the so meter, it yeah. doesn't mean that we won't. No. Put meters. It's something we have to look at. Well, meters right now cost 7,500 to 1,000 a piece to put in, and. The mayor wants to go to that pango eventually. Yeah. So to spend this, I think there's 28 spaces you can get. Yeah. You're talking almost $28,000 to put meters on one street. If if the street becomes filled all the time, then maybe it's an investment worth making. Okay. Well, uh, but until we see who, how many spaces are being utilized, then I. We can we'll, go from we'll there monitor. That. Yeah. We'll, that have, non, we'll have to monitor it. Non-meter, non-parking for now, but we'll know. Yeah. Maybe this justifies the twenty-eight thousand dollars investment. People could keep an eye on uh, how much parking is going on down there, so I don't have to drive by every day. Thanks. Any other questions? Roll call. Cassatt. Yes. Mope. Yes. Sosar. Yes. Monday. Yes. Next is two thousand fourteen eleven, adding new light items to the city of Hazelton's budget. First reading. Present. A second. On the question. Yeah, I, I have no problem with this, Jeff. But uh, what I want to do, I, I know we had I had talked to previous when I, when uh, in the previous administration about changing our whole system to to like, make like, it look like, like Lancaster, Lancaster or yeah. somebody other. Well. Reading or Lanka, whatever it was, we should do that. Yeah, and I, I, even know. their their audits are more in line with their budgets. Yes, and I would I would also include that that uh, and and these are just additions for the line items. That's and all. I, I was and just And I agree with to... that. I, I certainly agree with these. I would also like to have a narrative. Well, uh, we could, and that is that's important a good idea. that we yeah, do because you know what? what? In, we in the Lancaster budget, there is that. a narrative on every line, which I right. wanted, which I and, think and I do. think that's important, and, and but that would require that is not part of this. And, and well, no, that's fine. Put it on there now. Yeah, but, maybe Jack you know, needs to resubmit that to Prabula. We so just that need to get something in because they're working on yeah. the budget now. But, but and what, so what these line items are fine. 
These are fine, but uh, two words. I, I'm fine with what you're doing. I'm fine. My thing is, there might be these may have been before, so they may already have a number. It's just that they were dropped, and so now we yes. have to find the number again. You know, if, if they already have a number. If not, then a new number placed on it. Okay. Yeah, that's I just a couple additions right. we could add to this, mm -hmm. but they started the audit process already. Yeah. So, if we and that makes sense. That makes but, sense. But what. What if I'd you like want to, to make see. And, no, no, no. And uh, Jack, because I think this uh, that that's not germane to this. That's a whole different section. I think we can do that in August, though, where there is plenty of time yet. Because as the, I mean, we're in preliminaries right now. But I would like to see an explanation of what is being presented, why it's being presented, how it impacts not only this year but for other years yeah. coming. That is the way a true I budget agree. needs to be looked at. And, and what Jack had brought up last year, honestly, it was beautiful, that budget. Okay? Right. And I would like to see that implemented before we go any further, even if, if it's just combined with what we're using, okay? But it was so, such a good budget that we should well, go maybe by. We'll get that to Tom, and, and maybe he could look at it, and we'll make okay. a suggestion. That's fine. Maybe we could do it with an ordinance or. Yeah, actually, I was just right. trying to get yeah, something. Right. But, no, but these good. line this items good. made things more specific, which I appreciate. Yeah. I didn't find, going back, I didn't find one that was presented by council to the yeah. mayor in the last. These, these specified okay. areas, years. which oh, I okay. which I appreciate that you okay. did. Thank you. OK, roll call. <clears throat> Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next is Ordinance 2014-12, uh, repeating Ordinance 96-28 and Ordinance 99.7 and amending Ordinance 88.1, Ordinance 96-5 and Ordinance 2012-11 and Chapter 4, Article 6, uh, 4-26 in Chapter 116, Article 1, 116 to 1 of, of the Code of the City of Hazleton regarding the procedures for the reception, opening, and awarding of bid contracts. I'd like First to pre reading. present it. Second. On the question? Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday. Yes. Uh, next is Ordinance 2014-13, allowing on-street parking on the south side of Chestnut Street. No, no, that, oh, no, that, that, was, that, that was already no, that in there. Was out. Okay. You have the. Uh, oh, I have the. I'm sorry, I have the old one. I'm You're sorry. Using the old one. Sorry about that. Uh, 1482. Okay. Uh, appointment of the chief administrative officer. Uh, for the City of Hazleton Police, Fire, and Non-Uniformed Employment. I'll present. Pension plans. I'll present. Second. On the question. Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next uh, resolution of 2014-83. Uh, authorizing the city of Hazleton to enter into an agreement with PPL Electric Utilities Corporation to allow attachments to be placed on poles owned by P PPL Electric Utilities Corporation. Present. Did he present? Yeah. I'll oh, second. 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 On the question? Chief, maybe, yeah, if you <coughs> might have some questions. Thank you. Thank Chief, you. this is not going to include then any new poles. This is just for the existing poles that are on the streets at present time. Is that what I understand? No, doctor. No. This agreement is a standard agreement that PPL makes municipalities sign before PPL will even entertain a municipality hanging anything on any of their poles. I was rude when I sat down after D had asked questions, I actually called the highway foreman and said, could you please tell me how many poles does the city of Hazleton own because when the ordinance comes up I, or resolution, I need to explain it. Uh, Frank Vito explained to me that there are approximately 1,500 poles in the city of Hazleton. 
PPL owns 1,200, the city owns 300. The majority of the polls in the city of Hazleton are still PPL polls. So this agreement that has been reviewed by the solicitor, which I refer to as boilerplate, is pretty much the city agreeing that we will follow PPL's rules and contact them for them to review and examine anything prior to us actually hanging it on their polls. That's what but, the agreement but is. But that still doesn't answer my question. Are we, are we including only the polls that are ex in existence right now, or are we placing any new polls? If there should be new polls. We're not. If there we, should be new polls that PPL puts up, or they, we've got to put, included? or you know, the city buys, does, how, how does this, right. this work? Because the way, you know, there's always changes being right. made to the city. Right. The and way even the, with this idea of new street lighting and all that, that could change a lot of things as well. It's happening this week right now on 8th and Church Street, across the street from the bank. Right. PPL contacted me simply because they were dealing with the pole attachment agreement with me and said there is a one-way sign on a PPL pole that is being replaced. We've dug the pole, we've, we've put the new pole in. Do you want our sign crew, our pole crew, to move your street sign, or do you want to move it yourself? And so when they do put new poles in, this attachment agreement will allow, there's only one agreement needed for us to work with PPL. The problem is that since they changed to the new attachment agreement, we don't have one on record. So we need a new attachment agreement to be allowed to work with PPL on when we want to hang things on their poles, whether they're existing poles or whether PPL is going to put up a new pole and later on we want to hang something on it. Oh, okay. okay. That's why I asked about the signs as right. well, because I know a lot. But DeGrace had brought up about the date. This agreement shall take effect as of 618. Right, and we can change the date because this hasn't been executed. So the date could just simply be lined out and changed um, because this is just a, a copy and it's been months that I'm working with PPL. This is the one they sent me. However, it's a, it's a form. This is a standard form that comes right off their website. We could print it out, type in the new date, and, and when the mayor executes it or when the mayor is allowed to execute it, it'll have that date on it. Okay. I hope that the 300 versus 1,200 answers also that question, though, because according to the highway foreman, the city only owns 300 poles Out of in the 1,500 pole inventory. Was it okay. Page? Thank you. Thank you. No. Yeah, that's. No. Is that this one? Uh, Chief, one last question. No, that was the red light. That's, that's, that's the next that's one. That's the next one. Oh, that's okay. The I'm that sorry. I. Never mind. You're that's the next. Never one. mind. Oh, you can stand till we do the vote because you'll be up for the next one. Okay. You're, you're back to back. Fair enough. Okay. Okay. On the, on the resolution, roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Thank you. Next is resolution 2014-84, approving the automated red light enforcement transportation grant agreement. Uh, and authorize the mayor to sign said agreement. Present. Second, on the question. Can I answer the question? It was raised on the yeah, question go, go ahead, first. Go ahead. Um, the, I, I have no idea when, other than perhaps because the date that it was printed off the website was 7-10, that that's the date that shows up there. Mary Ellen's name was on the, the second page of the application simply because when we sub it's also on the first page, I'm sorry, oh, yeah. because when we submitted it, Mary Ellen was the acting city administrator at the we time. Had to go forward with um, it, yeah. I, I, I'm confident that if we get your approval, because this grant has already been awarded to the city. They're giving us the $65,000. We need city council's approval for the mayor to execute the grant. But at that time, we can certainly submit a change to 
ARLE and tell them, listen, we have a new point of contact. Yeah. Um, I'm just not one for trying to change forms that were already approved prior to being allowed to execute them. Okay. The question that was raised on um, the line that says the proposed method for procuring the project, which is under section three of the first page project justification, mm -hmm. the fact is it does state, although not anticipated, the city of Hazelton would provide any additional funding. However, this is simply the grant, and the grant is only going to return the money to the city after we show that we spent it. What still must be done is the, the, the spec, the bid spec has to be put out for people to bid on it and then come back to the city clerk and be opened in front of city council. So as part of the bid specifications that could get put out once we get the grant, we would ensure that there's a line item in there that explains right in the bid it cannot exceed $65,000. Can't do it. And that would just be in the, in, the, in the bid specs. So if it should, would there be eliminations in part of the project to make it fit the bid, the, the 65? Right. And according to the city engineer, and I don't like to normally talk for anybody, but I've had a detailed discussion with him on this. Everything that is in the front page of the resolution, signal heads, countdown timer, pedestrian heads, pedestrian push buttons, curb ramp improvements, selective sidewalk reconstruction, crosswalk installations, white edge lines, stop bar installations, warning signals, regulatory signs, and retro reflectivity are all able to be covered in that $65,000 cost. And the reason why he's so confident of that is because he has the current estimates of what it's costing to do the Broad Street corridor. And that's how he knows that those things okay. could be. This is only for Cedar Street, right? That's this is for Diamond at Cedar. Cedar. That's correct. We submitted for the three of them that were identified in the walkable communities they decided to give us one, award the one grant. We actually submitted for Wyoming Street and for Alter and Third. Now, according to his question with you too as well, as far as ticketing and cameras, is that gonna go in conjunction with no. what's going the, on right now? The, the, the money for this is from the ARLE, which is the Automated Red Light Enforcement. We as a city of the third class are restricted by the Pennsylvania Vehicle Code from ever issuing red light tickets. It's illegal. The only people in Pennsylvania who can do that is a city of the first class. However, because Philadelphia does it and they generate millions of dollars a year in revenue, the Commonwealth has said to Philadelphia, you've got to take a portion of your revenue generated from your red light cameras, you've got to make a fund, and we've got to share that money with the other municipalities who can't write tickets with red light cameras. So although this talks about red light enforcement, that's simply where the money is coming from to provide for this grant. And it was, I think, $22 million that was spread out across Pennsylvania from um, Philadelphia's red light enforcement. But we, or $2 million was, I think, the take. But we got $65,000 from the red light enforcement money that Philadelphia has to give back to the Commonwealth that is then put into grants. We will never be allowed, unless they change the vehicle code, to do any type of red light enforcement with ticketing and cameras. That's simply what's providing the money for the grant. Okay, thank you. Chief, you're welcome. Chief, one last thing. Um, only because of the date when all of this was applied for. Uh, and it's now 2014. And I know that you answered that in terms of it'll meet the specs and all that, but uh, with inflation as it, it's been since, I mean, it's got, it's got a name of Mary Ellen Leibon, which is, is, is about two, two and a half years old right now. Do you, uh, are, are you, that confident that we will still come in under the costs to meet specifically because inflation has, has right. picked things up. I'm confident Labor simply because if we initially planned on doing um, a half a block in each direction of sidewalk improvements, we'll probably only do 
50 feet. There are places where we could cut expenses to actually absolutely come in with the 65,000. Okay. But it would be my suggestion, again, that when this bid goes out, we ensure that it cannot go over $65,000. Yeah, End of story. Okay. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next you. is Resolution 2014-85, Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grant Program, uh, the grant application. Chief, what happens if oh, we wait, don't? Uh, we for oh, present. I'm sorry. Yeah, we got to present. Jeff presented, I'll second, on the question. On the question. Okay, thank you. Chief, what if we don't get the grant? We already did get the grant. Fortunately, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I was notified by the chief of police from the city of Wilkes-Barre that we already were awarded $10,778. I didn't even submit an application for this grant. This is one of the grants that every year the federal government through this, um, they call it the EBMJ, the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grant Program. They go into each county, and in Luzerne County, the money is given to two cities. It's given to Wilkes-Barre and Hazleton because we meet the criteria for size. Um, three years ago, it's what paid for the computers in the cars or air cards or something. This particular time, Wilkes-Barre notified me and told me that we were awarded a grant for something we didn't even put in for. The problem I had was that there was a response period that gave me basically from Wednesday of last week until Friday to get what we were going to use this grant for back to Wilkes-Barre to submit. So since I was on the firing range because we're transitioning away from the old handguns to a new handgun, it seemed that this made the most sense since I can use this money that's already awarded to the city one of the acceptable expenses is for just that, the training, the weapons, the ammunition, and so it couldn't have come at a better time. Okay. I filled out this for you because if it's acceptable with you, I can use this $10,778 that's been awarded to the city to offset some of the cost that I can already pay for that transition from my line items. Um, okay. But I'm looking at it saying, well, I could save the $10,778. If, if we don't approve this grant, we just won't get the money. It's not as if yeah. I could submit a different application. That period is over. No, I understand right. that. I, I, and and, and I'm, I'm glad that, that we've already been awarded that. Uh, Mr. Sheriff brought up an interesting point yeah. with, with the guns right. and the ammunition. How are we uh, going to deal with the ammunition that we have? and how will we replace it with the nine millimeter cartridges right. then? The ammunition is normally replaced by asking the company, and you're talking about a worldwide manufacturer, same thing with the weapons. Here's our weapons, we wanna trade them in to offset a lot of or some of the cost of the new weapons. And so we're working with Sig Sauer right now and they're doing just that. They had it up on their worldwide website but we're very cautious who we will sell the weapon to. I'm not going to sell a Hazelton Police Department weapon and have it turned back up on our street and it committed a crime. So they'll either go to federal firearms licensed dealers or Sig Sauer to manufacture. Okay. Same thing with the ammunition where we take the ammunition and they aren't going to give you 100% of the value, but you can trade one caliber of ammunition in with some of these large companies. You can't do it with the retail store, but you can do it with some of the companies that we work with that are huge nationwide chains, and we trade in 45 ammunition, and we get the nine millimeter ammunition. Okay, thank so you, thank you. I, I have just one quick question, Chief. I know in your narrative that you sent me that you said that the weapons, uh, the 45s have malfunctioned, not chambering rounds. Did that ever happen in the field or mainly with practice or, or on the range or is it we're, ever? We're fortunate that 
there's very few times in, in the city we have to discharge our weapon. However, these weapons over the period of the last few years have become notorious for malfunctioning constantly on the range to the point where I do, uh, you go to the range, the next morning the OIC of our shift is inspecting your weapon. We never did that before. We took for granted people clean them, but I'm now stringent with making sure we're maintaining them. It is not the maintenance of the weapon itself. Um, the manufacturer has replaced the magazines for us. They've replaced and given us heavy duty springs in the magazines, and yet the, they continue to malfunction. And so there is no a comfort level among the members, and B, I question the liability for the city when we're saying, you know, God forbid it did malfunction. Chief, how did you decide on the Sig Sauer? Why, why not the Glock? We, well, we went through uh, a three day testing uh, of a Glock 2117, um, Sig Sauer, the 226 in both 9 and 40 and the Springfield XD. Sour, how, how much does it hold that we're getting? How many 15, in a nine millimeter will hold 15 rounds in a magazine and one in the chamber. Currently we carry 12 rounds, so because we carry three magazines, I'm actually giving our, our men the equivalent of um, almost a full extra magazine. But we, oh, yeah, get, okay, go, get when back we to went the through the, the, the three days of firing every weapon against each other, we also had, of the two Glocks that Glock sent us, uh, in about, I think, 1,100 rounds through the Glock, it malfunctioned nine times. And so we lost our comfort level with the weapon that we were testing, saying, how are we going to vote to go to this weapon if the reason why we're doing this testing is because we're trying to go away from a weapon that's malfunctioning? So fortunately, Both of them malfunction or the, the, the Glock 21, the 21. In, the, uh, in the 9 millimeter just malfunctioned um, eight times out of 1,100 rounds that we fired on multiple shooters. It wasn't just one person that yeah. was saying, hey, you did something wrong. And so because of it, we disqualified the Glock simply because it malfunctioned too many times. And what's the track record with this particular gun? I couldn't hear you. What's the track record with this particular gun? It didn't malfunction? Uh, the six six hour. hour, absolutely never. We put 2,500 rounds using eight different shooters through this Sig Sauer in three different days of testing. We couldn't make it malfunction. And I mean, we just continued to fire it without cleaning, thinking eventually it's going to malfunction. You know, it's still going strong. Now, are we replacing all of the guns? Yes, ma'am. portion of, okay, all of yeah. the guns. All right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, roll call. <clears throat> Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Uh, next is. Thank you. You're welcome. welcome. The appointment uh, resolution 2014 86, appointment of the city engineer and director of public works. Presented. I'll second. On the question? On the question. Uh, to make things clear, and so that there are no misunderstandings. Uh, the second paragraph, whereas the city engineer serves also as the director of public works, and I, I have seen that in past times, but to, to make it as clear as possible and to delineate uh, jobs uh, that are department heads and everything else, I would make a motion at this point uh, to amend this particular resolution and eliminate paragraph two, naming the engineer, and in paragraph three, eliminating uh, the, not the engineer, but the director of public works department uh, from paragraph two and paragraph three. So you're, you're eliminating the director of public works from paragraph two and three, is that what you Right, said? right. Okay. But Excuse me, Dave. J yes. The whole paragraph or just the director of public works? Uh, paragraph well, two. paragraph two uh, it can be eliminate, eliminated completely. Okay. Because that's saying that the engineer serves also as. You don't need that in there. Okay. Uh, on paragraph three, uh, we, we are still regarding the position of engineer. We are simply eliminating the director of public works. Okay, thank you. Okay? Thank you. And, and that would be my motion to amend. Okay, on the motion to amend? 
or you have, you have a question? Uh, well, I want to ask, you, you want to take the whole thing out or it may serve as director? No, I'm, I'm just take delineating that completely so that there's no misunderstanding of, of a department chairman versus the actual job and function of a city engineer, and that is what we want to put the RFP on out for. Okay, on, on the uh, amendment? On the amendment. Given, okay. On the amendment? Uh, you want to start with that? Oh, yeah. Is there a second? Is there a sec yeah, I I'll second? Yeah, I'll second this that. amendment. I'll second it. On the amendment? I'll present. You second? Second it, okay. On the question? Roll call? Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Uh, back on the uh, resolution now as amended. I'll present. Second. <coughs> on the question? Okay. So, well, go ahead. No, this is, you want to just put an RFP out for an engineer or an engineering firm? An engineer or an engineering firm. firm. Okay, that would be set to like a fixed, like, like, the, like the law says, a fixed term. A fixed salary, not hourly. I, and that's really what I want. I want a fixed salary. That's, uh, that's what the, it said, okay. Fixed yeah. salary, four-year term. Now, is this going to be a problem oh. with... Excuse me, but this is because it will only be during... Um, to the end of the mayor's term, the not The bids will be out for it, but this we're doing as a permanent thing for engineering, period, okay? Just so that's understood. But... Uh, the bid that we've put out can only go up until the end of the mayor's term. Okay, because I was just, it says here May is from 1952 and, every four and years. And the reason why I did that was because that, uh, what you see here in the quotation marks is taken directly from the third class city code yep, uh, I got as that. amended and as changed as of uh, May 19th, 2014. And that's why I put that in there so that there was no misunderstanding, no challenge, no problem with having the council deal with the engineer. Okay. I, I see that the, the council controls the engineer. Right. I was just concerned right. here that it says every four years from yeah. 52 on. And that would be the reason why. And that's so, so this is a technicality, but I don't think so that can be written into the specs rather than uh, uh, the, 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 uh, for the request for proposals, rather than it but would be fitting in here into the resolution. Did the, I mean, I, I wasn't here, but did the last council, when the mayor came in, appoint an no. engineer? Uh, the mayor. The mayor's done that. Or was it approved by council? The, in 2011 or 12, I believe it was, was the last time. It, it been. was a professional service that was put in place. That's how we got Albert and Banish. But after that, there was no more. But they never voted, the council, that prior council Not never voted on it. Prior the councils used to, I believe, because that's how. But 2012, January 2012 was. Was the last one with uh, the mayor. Did the council of 2012 vote on an engineer? Is, is to my knowledge, no. I don't remember. And I, I, I honestly don't remember. Okay. Uh, uh, for that I sake. I don't remember either. Uh, uh, but I, 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 I do not believe so. Okay. And, and I'll stand corrected if otherwise. But no, right I, I now, just don't. I, that's, uh, was this is concern. what I'm going with, and this is what I will. No. Okay. This that is was, what I'm proposing. Uh, yeah. That was my thing. And then I just, because the mayor has the right to appoint department heads, but you took that out. Right. So then but this is. But then again, this is not a department that's head. What, that's what I'm, you took right. that out about the public yeah. director of public works was my other. Just and, and we've just taken conflicted. back tonight, uh, at least the so starting this is point just of the, the engineering uh, position this as a person or a firm. Right. RFP. Yeah. Okay. My only comment is we should even be going out for the UCC work, and and uh, and I'm sure we'd get a lot of engineering firms bidding on it. Uh, I know. Uh, you know the mayor's cousin is doing the work now, our UCC work, and we'd like to put that out for bid, and hopefully that's in the works too. But uh, any other questions? No, but I would like to bring up: we still don't have an engineer that was appointed. Or, uh, was a, we picked right. it, but the mayor has not signed right. his contract yet for CD. Right, and that's holding up an awful lot of work. Unfortunately, we're off subject a little bit, but that. You know, now we're, we're talking about engineers and important people that, you know, for those of you who have trouble making steps, 
all you got to do is take a look at that, that sign out there on the elevator that, that, that has been uh, stated is broken for how long. And there are other projects that that engineering firm is supposed to be doing as well and is not doing right now because it, the, he refuses to sign His on contract. and allow that contract to go through. That's wrong. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. That's it for our business. Uh, no, we got no, one, one, what, more. We one more. One more. Retirement one more. of Leonard. Oh, sorry. Uh, request the approval for disability retirement for Lieutenant John Leonard. Resolution, Resolution 2014-87. Sorry. Present. I'll second. second. Okay. Okay. I just, I just have one question, Chief. I, I've been reading the Disability Handbook, and I, I have no problem with this at all, but it's saying here that a person who is going out for a disability annuity or disability pension is, has the inability, I'm reading right from the handbook, the inability to engage in any form of gainful employment. Right. I, and, and he qualifies under that. Correct. We've discussed this, you know, several of us have talked about this. This is a very bitter pill, I think, for all of us to swallow, to be discussing allowing somebody to go out on a disability because they got hurt at work. Um, if I may, Lieutenant Leonard, Lieutenant John Leonard is a hero in my eyes, in our department's eyes, and, and I know that in all of the conversations I've had with you, we, we aren't questioning did he get hurt at work, didn't he? We all know he's a combat wounded war veteran, he's a father, a husband, he's a pillar in his community, and he's one damn good cop. And the fact is that he got hurt wrestling with a drug dealer and had to have a total knee replacement. That's what led us here today. On several occasions, he's risked his life for the community. Uh, I've reviewed this the, with not only our city solicitor and the mayor, but also the city's labor attorney, and they poured through everything. They've reviewed the medical documentation. Did doctor look at it? Did yeah. our doctors? Two different doctors. Say that he can't, um, he can't walk. Exactly. And it is all of the attorneys that we've consulted with, Chris Slusser and Lars Anderson from Oregon Kluger, Quinn, the labor attorney, and they all feel that he certainly does meet the criteria and it would be my humble request to council that based on their opinion that we allow Lieutenant Leonard to retire on this disability. Uh, if, if we don't allow it, we kept him on the rolls, eventually when he gets his 20 years on, he'd still be allowed to retire at 50%. So one way or another, the man is going to go out with a 50% disability, but I believe that you know, in fairness to him for his injuries that he received at work, we allow him his disability. Okay. Any questions? No. no thank I you. Just wish him well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you for his service. Uh, roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. That's it for our business. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, comments from the audience? I guess I might as well start today. Go ahead. <laughs> um, first, Norman Tarrant, of course, you know my name. Uh, I have a couple of things I want to bring up. One of the first things is uh, start with the sidewalks. As, as I use the electric cart because I have to, because of my, and right now I don't have a vehicle, so I use that to get around the city. And a lot of the sidewalks I can't even drive up with the cart on because the sidewalks are in distant repair. And in fact, one of the things that you should notice to the, to the people in the streets department is coming up north on Church Street from Wendy's, when I get to the railroad tracks, there's not a cut at that location, and I have to go on the street at times with my car to drive, which isn't safe. So some of the sidewalks, I think, need to be looked at and see what we can do to some of the owners of these sidewalks to make sure they are maintained so people like myself or other people might have to use a wheelchair or other things on the city sidewalks can get across them without having to go into the streets and put themselves or people in vehicles at a hazard 
to uh, get from point A to point B throughout the city. Maybe you could uh, send us an email on, on where those particular places are and we could forward it to... I'll start making some notes and taking some pictures yeah. as I go around and I'll make sure I get your email addresses yeah, later get, and yeah, get it out to you guys. Or send it to, to Lisa and she'll, she'll get it to us and you know where there should be a curb cut, I agree with you. That, all that takes is uh, a concrete saw. Yeah, the, the only place cut. I saw that was the curb cut was uh, coming was I'm coming out from Wendy's on that side of Church Street. When I get right to the uh, train tracks there, there's no cut for me to uh, go across at that particular point. And one of the other places that's very noticeable is on Laurel Street, right across from um, Victoria's Candy. The tree has pushed the cement up so high that there's no way you can go over this hump with your cart. And the thing is, you're, in some of these uh, potholes that I see on the sidewalks, I scrape the bottom of the cart and I'm going to do damage to the cart that I'm using going up and down the sidewalks. So that, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only person in the city that this is possibly a hazard too. And one of the things I noticed too is some of our new sidewalks that were just put in on Broad Street are cracking and are pitted already. So I, I think that's be brought to the attention of the uh, state because if you go up Broad Street going towards the shopping center, there's some cracks, there's a lot of pitting that is already on those sidewalks that are less than a year old and shouldn't be in that shape already. I was surprised when I saw some of the cracks and some of the pitting that was uh, on those sidewalks. So I want to bring that to council's attention to uh, hey, let them know. Let, take some pictures and notes, notations of that, especially like with the news, so it can be brought up to the state, okay? Sure, I will do that. I will, I will do my job and to try to get some more documentation up for you guys. I have no problem doing that. I just want to know how you want me to proceed as far as that item going. going. One of the other things I want to find out is with, we have six, sorry, we have three uh, companies that are doing running buses, or vans to New York on a daily basis. Does the city get any fees or can the city impose any type of uh, fee or regulation to these things? Because that, if- That's if, regulated by the, the Federal PUC. Trade Commission PUC. or the, P, the UCC, yeah. yeah. We, uh, that's regulated by them and I don't think we can interfere with that. Because I- we, cause if, we get from them is if they're located in the city, we can get uh, their taxes, mercantile tax or their income tax. They live in the city. Yeah, if they have an I don't office, think we're allowed to, to charge any fees for buses because they're regulated by a whole, by the also some of the things, also one of the things I noticed is having to That's use the it. Interstate right. Commerce Commission. That's yeah, right. you're right. The Interstate Commerce, you're right, Dave. Yeah. And having to use it to go to New York recently, I noticed that the vans that I was on were possibly over packed with people. So that's something I think that maybe we should be watching out for that that's another issue that could be coming up that well, they that could would be you'd have to complain to a federal agency I think over that it, uh, it was filled to capacity filled more than yeah it was I was tied in it going to the city the a uh, couple weeks ago um, one of the um, Excuse me, it's off I can read my own uh, notes here. One of the things too that I brought up is, one of the other questions I have is going from Locust Street to Maple, when you get to the cemetery and you have to, and you, Locust Street ends at, by, at Maple Street, the cemetery there, coming up uh, from Broad Street. There are no proper signage and people are making the left turn on a one-way street onto Maple Street and then turning onto Locust on the other side of the cemetery, on Vine Street Cemetery. And, if you're allowed to go to that one block is two is properly two ways. There should be some signage, and when you get to the other side of, of Locust Street, it should be a sign saying, "Do not enter," so that people know they can't proceed two ways more than that. And I think that I brought it up to the chief, and he was going to make notes about putting proper signage there. But I just want to know: is that block legally a two-way block, or is it uh, not? It's a two-way block. Yeah. So I think some of the. So I think some of the signage at that particular intersection be needs fixed, to be addressed yeah. because of your, there's a potential of something happening we'll, there. We'll talk to, to Frankie about it. All right. And that's basically everything I have for today. I thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure. And one of the things I want to also commend our city clerk. I got to see our uh, minutes and see our minutes that are posted on YouTube. And it's nice that whatever I say tonight will be <laughs> out on the web for all eternity. And she's doing a great job of what I saw posted online. So <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Very good. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, one thing, Mark Rabo Hazelton, I'd like to. Uh, Ask uh, last week uh, there was a story on 
on the news and uh, said that the mayor was saying that there's only one code enforcement officer and one health of inspector in Hazleton. Is that correct? Yes, they're saying yes. That's yeah, but we're correct. in the process of hi hiring some people. Okay. Two more people. All right. Well, I would also like to know as far as uh, where's all the money is, uh, that's coming in as far as from the fines and you know, isn't there anything uh, being done as far as the Act 90 goes for code enforcement and uh, the existing, uh, like what's the, the, fee the fees coming in right now as of, you know, if you could get it from January to this point uh, of the year, like what is the, the fee amount that was collected as far as fines and fees and permits and... We could get you that one. We'll, okay. get, we'll get you the information. We'll, we'll try to get that for you. You know what? When, when, you know what? That may be a first since we've gotten very little information about anything financially going on in this city. Yeah, and I'd like to know uh, when. Seven months. And I'd like to know uh, when are the foot patrols starting? I mean, it's. What? What's that? What? Yeah, we should put it online. You're right, Chief. What yeah. Did you say? We should put it online. Yeah, you're right. Uh, that would be a good idea. The information, like fines and stuff. And I, I would also like to know about the foot patrols. Um, I've been saying this since last year, about like when, I mean, in the warm weather months, we could, you know, start to look at foot patrols. And I thought we were gonna, you know, try to do something with that. We're gonna, we're gonna work on that. Yeah. Foot, no, foot patrols for foot, foot patrols. I, I didn't see any. I, I well, go ahead. Go ahead, Chief. Come on up. Go ahead. And you're right. We've, we've talked about this, and I believe that they're a phenomenal deterrent for crime. The fact is that with if there's only three cars out, and one of them gets out, and he happened to be on Mine Street when he called out on foot patrol, if you're not in that section that he's walking, you're not going to know that he was out on foot patrol. Um, I, I, I wish that it was easier to see all of us out on foot patrol, but we are doing them as often as we possibly okay. can. Okay. But you're right. It's a, it's yeah. a great Thanks. idea. Yeah. Thanks, okay. Chief. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. And uh, like I said, as far as with the, uh, um, the nuisance properties as well, uh, can we uh, amend the chronic uh, nuisance property ordinance as well? Because that's not in, in conformity with... Uh, the reenacted third class city code. Uh, I think that may be something that needs to be amended because uh, it's it's not in sync with okay. with it. So I think that that needs to be done. Okay, thanks. All right, Mark. thanks. I, I am on sidewalks. Getting back to the other person, what it's responsible of the person who lives there to make make sure a sidewalk is cleaned and. In order, is that the owner? The owner of the property? Yeah. Well, Not the renter, the owner. The owner. Okay, I was just curious. Any other questions or comments? Go ahead. Go ahead. Maureen Moser, Jeff. Um, I'm just wondering, yeah, we're, we're responsible, the owner of the property are responsible to keep the sidewalks clean. I put the paving in on the sidewalks, and, but if you park on your own sidewalk that you put in, you're ticketed. Why can't you park on your own sidewalk if you own the property? Because somebody needs to get by there to walk sometimes, right? I, I, don't, I don't know. No, you're, you're just that. on the side. You're not on um, blocking oh. where they can walk because the sidewalks are pretty wide. Go ahead, Chief. You could have, you can answer that. You uh, go ahead. It's illegal in the vehicle code. Yeah. The, you don't own the sidewalk. You are responsible but I have to pay for the. For it. Yes, that's correct. I know. It, it's, but you you're responsible it. for the, the sidewalk, right of but you don't own it. It's a it's a city right of way, and it's against the law in the vehicle code to park on a sidewalk. That's there. They don't say. Oh, well, you could park on the first six inches, the first three feet, the first. It's against the law to park on a sidewalk. And therefore, 
although you're responsible to maintain it, you don't own it. It's a city right of way. Right, but I mean, I don't park on my sidewalk, right. but everybody in their world does. Yeah, I know. Understood. I'm on a corner, right. but I, nobody, I've seen a thousand police cars pass and nobody has ticketed anybody on I know on in the past sidewalk. they've ticketed a lot so of people. So we could make a lot, a lot of, of money people. if they start handing out, I'll they, hand them out I, for you. I, I understand. <laughs> and well, here's, put here's, an application in for the court. Unfortunately, <laughs> okay. this just happened last week on Cleveland Street. An individual that lives on Cleveland Street sent an email to me and a thousand other people complaining that the neighbor was setting off fireworks, was parking on the sidewalk, was double parking. And so at 6.45 the next morning, guess who was on Cleveland Street trying to deal with the issue? I was. But in fairness to everybody, I couldn't just write one car a parking ticket for parking on the sidewalk because the owner of that car would have said, wait a minute, what about the other 15 cars? So when I observed that there were three blocks worth of violations, every car on the sidewalk was ticketed. Right, you know? and that makes right. us money. Well, I understand that. At the same time, we did it last year, and, and, and I, I recognize that things ebb and flow, and apparently, I thought last year when we went through the city, we made enough noise that people would stop parking on the sidewalks. I have no problem with telling everybody again, make sure you start to do parking sidewalk enforcement. The problem becomes the complaints that you're going to get tomorrow when we're out writing tickets again to everybody. I'll, I'll refocus, you know, it's like playing whack-a-mole. We change our attention and we go from the vagrants on the benches on Broad Street to, and, and, and so you just keep refocusing, the problem is back. We'll start again to heavily ticket cars on the sidewalk. It's, it's not that we, we ignore them, we just have to sort of pick and choose, okay, what are we fighting today? And while you're doing that, you can also get the furniture on the outside of the porches. Because mm. there's lots of that. Chief, yes, when you first came on, remember we had a discussion, and I said about having some of these things put in the paper right. periodically, like just say, okay, this is a reminder. We will be out ticketing. Get your cars off the sidewalks. Right. You know, ahead of time, maybe the paper or the, I agree. the station the will only, cooperate. And I, I respect that, Councilwoman. But my only thoughts are, I will send the city broke with newspaper advertisements advising no, people. No, I'm, I'm asking for uh, cooperation maybe from the, the news media or the, the paper to do it as oh, a courtesy. Then I'm going to turn my turret and simply say, I'm, I'm if, here if you could just make sure that you put out that the city police are going to, again, strictly enforce sidewalk parking. Um, As part of the we'll council the meeting, you can, you can incorporate it in. See, I have no problem with tickets on, like, for people blatantly parking on the sidewalk. The thing I have a problem with is where my mom lives, which is on 20th Street. 20th Street between James and Locust is where she's at. The street is narrow. Actually, it's narrow all the way down until you get to the development where Hafey is, and it's all the way to uh, 309. If you park off of your sidewalk, okay, and you park in the street, you will have room for one car, okay? My mom's car got hit because of, like, it was parked right in front of her house. Is it she, a, is she, it a two it's a two-way, it's a two-way. It was parked in front of her house, okay? I parked, and I will admit, we were like kind of, like my tires, because I drive it, the tires were in the gutter, okay? And I was off to the side. He was coming down, someone came around James Street, okay, to avoid them, ended up clipping the, the front of my mom's car. Now luckily the guy who hit my mom's car, because I would have never known, knew us, and came in and said, I just hit your car, I'm so sorry. I'll take care of everything. But coming around that street, if you're parked, there is no room. I had pictures. I had addressed this issue before 
when they first ticketed everybody. Maybe what needs to be addressed is that uh, the traffic on that street, the traffic flow. Maybe if you, st if you start one making one-way streets for all the narrow, because where you, where you run into a problem is the older parts of town are narrow. The, the, the what you have, like where you have down by Hafian Township or, or like a, other developments, the streets are a little wider. You know, Wyoming's a wider street. Uh, you know, Laurel Street's wider. But when you cut down to where my mom and my mom and dad lived, they used to be dirt roads. So you have houses that are very close to the roads. You don't have a lot of, of space. Judy. And, and when I first addressed this, because this, I mean, everybody got ticketed down our way, I'm like, where do you guys want us to do? If we park on the roads, we have, we have an issue there. Now, someone did park in my mom's parking space. It was handicapped. Both of us have cars that ha have handicapped because I'm on disability also. Where they parked the wrong way in front of my mom's uh, handicap sign, and they were on the sidewalk. So I called down. Cops came, I would say, uh, there was an officer there probably within 15, 20 minutes. Because I waited. And I said, I'm the one that called. That's the person. You know, please tag them because, number one, they're, they're parked the wrong way. Number two, they're in my mom's parking space. I can't get in there. And I have to get in and out because my mom has heart problems. He ticketed that car. And I said, if you want to make a lot of money, I said, go up the thing because right across the street and over there was a guy I'm in and I'm when I tell you he was probably this far away from his fence he was on the sidewalk there was no car he wasn't you know and that I can't see I mean he said to me well we have to use common sense because he wasn't looking above there he said this street's narrow I'm not going to do it so I and I applaud the cops that see that the patrol officers that see this is a narrow street there's they've got to have something a little bit, but like, let's not be blatant, you know, blatant with it. When I said to him, no, the one above that, he said, I'll be here all day if I have to take it all the cars. You can't pick and choose. Like Frank said, I, I understand that. And I, and I believe that, you know, with the chief, I don't have a problem when you're ticketing, but don't pick and choose saying, okay, we're going to nail that because I called because of my mother, but you're not going to nail the guy who's blatant on the sidewalk, and there was no room to pass. I mean, if you have a narrow street, and I said, like I said, if you, you have two tires on the sidewalk that you're over enough, but you have enough for two cars to pass, that's fine. Because when they first ticketed, everybody was parking on the street, and we had to wait. Like, I was on James Street, I had to pull over on James Street, wait for them to come down 20th Street before I could pull down to go down to Peace. So that, I mean, that's where you run into a problem. I, I sympathize with you. I grew up in what they call a court or oh, I know some call, of the, yeah. what we call an alley. All right, no parking on either side, in the middle of the block. Our entire lives, if we parked, we had to park up on the side street or down on the, the bottom side mm -hmm. street. Garbage collection, same thing. We carried our garbage up to the corner. Everybody else got theirs picked up in front of the house. There are certain situations in Hazleton where we do have problems with the roads. Maybe your street is one of them. Maybe Chief DeAndrea needs to address that, put a red flag because of the situation, yeah, like 20, or turn it into a one-way road. Yeah, Jean, I mean, it's 20th Street is, like I said, that's narrow. But if you go down to 21st Street, there's enough for cars to go by. You know, and that's where I live. I'm down on 21st and, and, and Locust. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's a common sense thing that if you're looking at a street, but like don't pick and choose either because like I said, I told him there's like a bunch right there that you could just, you know, you could have a field day with. Oh, I, I agree. He can't pick you know? and choose on the cars, but he can uh, work with the people as far as like your problem with the uh, narrower street. So it has to be really addressed with. Right. It has, uh, there, there is an issue. Platter. Am I right, Chief? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's a tough call. It really is. I mean, it's a tough call. But like I said, if they're, if, if you're this way, this far away from, and, and the reason why you can't park on the sidewalk is because of the handicapped, that somebody has to have accessibility. Because I did look into this. 
And what it is is 36 inches. They, there has to be enough room on the. On the I sympathize with you. Them. Know. My father died with, of cancer. My mother died of cancer. We couldn't even put a handicap sign in right. front of the house because there was no parking space. So try to get somebody yeah. who's coming from chemo uh, from the corner. All right. And I, and I understand. And but like I said, you know, that's. I mean, that's an issue that if they're going to go around a ticketing. Kind of look at the situation too. If the two wheelers are on the side, like. Kind of, and, and a lot of times down in that area, there's no, there's no copings. Mm -hmm. So you can't really tell where the road ends and where the, The chief's you agreeing. Know. You're going to have to, like, sit down and work it out. And if there's Yeah, like I said, I have no problem ticketing people. That's, that's not, you know, that, that's not an issue. It's just the idea that, like, just when you're looking at it, don't, you know, don't crucify somebody who's like, like my mom, who's handicapped and has to have the car pulled out of the way because we've already gotten hit. Yeah, that's you know? understand. It's common yeah. sense. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Okay, now just because she got thanked for putting the minutes on the website, it's like we have a lot of speakers tonight. So okay. We want to hear what you have My to say. My name is Diana Jessel, and I live on Second and James, and I. As you can see, I have peripheral neuropathy, yeah. and I have, I have a handicap sign in front of my house, and my gutter goes like this, okay? So if I park straight in that gutter, since April, I have fallen it's, 10 times yeah. getting out of my car. April, I broke my toe. Right now, I fell out the other day, my toe is black and blue. I, I cannot get out on a ridge. I have to get up a little. Why am I paying for a handicap sign when I can't park just two inches higher so I can get out of the car? I cannot get out of the car in the gully. And I'll bring you my medical records showing you how many times Yesterday, I fell flat in my face because I cannot. I have to hang on the car door and this to get out. And when I get out, uh, my gait is not good, and I fall. And I've got the ticket already because I was two inches. I have to be a little. I'm not on street as on my payment. As but such. you have to be further I'm away. Just, I just got to have that little flatness in order for me to exit the car. If I'm in the gully, I fall all the time. Thank Could, you. I'm going to make a suggestion. Thank Maybe you. when we're filling out the handicap applications and whatnot, if there is a problem with the street where the handicap sign is going and they would have to because she has such a gully, be, have her car pulled out a little bit further, would that be a problem? Chief, there's got to be a little, there's got to be the possibility of a there little flexibility there. There has to be some there. leeway here. We'll pass a resolution allowing her to. Uh, understood. The, 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 no. the, the, a the little fact flexibility is, and right. common sense goes a long way. I can't argue with you. I just, I can't grant somebody permission to break a law. Right. You it's, know, but, but right. uh, again, for yeah. an inch or two. I, 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 again, I, or I, have I the understand. I don't think you, anybody's out with the tape with, with measure a, measuring right. an inch with or a, two. With a handicap spot, you've oh, got no, to understand. Got you're talking wheelchairs. You're talking crutches. You're talking a lot I of understand. things. I understand. I right. think that you know. I think we can work that out. Here, my suggestion is always simple to anyone who feels that they were aggrieved by receiving any kind of ticket. That is honestly what the magistrate's office is for, because normally. That's where that's your recourse to say, wait a minute, yeah. I, I, I have this issue. Um, and again, it's not as if the police officers understand. But some officers should have some common sense. I, 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 I cannot say that they're not showing common sense by issuing it because I'm not there at the car. All I can say is that yeah. I think we're all correct. Or, or okay. if, if the, the streets department could possibly look at that location and, sure. and maybe just build up her right. curbing a little bit for her. Okay. I actually came up recognizing that this might be on YouTube. I, I, I had a, a lot of things on the agenda this evening. And I, it's just important for me at the end of the meeting to thank you because I appreciate your support. And, and again, as I said, the bittersweet one 
is requesting that we retire on a disability who I continue to stress as a hero. And personally and professionally, I would like to thank you for your support. You're welcome. I just have one question, Chief, it's on something different. I saw in the paper where they, they passed a, a, a law where police uh, agencies couldn't get uh, reimbursed for patrolling outside their area. Right. Yes. Does that can affect us at all? Or uh, it's an excellent question. I had already, well, it's 100% correct. I mean, there's a, a section right in Title 42, 5989, or 5983, I believe, of Title 42 that spells out jurisdictional coverage. I had had that exact question with the state police and brought it to their attention because of the airport and because of St. Stanislaus Ballfield, both of which I know are in the township, both of which I believe the city is either owns or has taken possession of. Um, and, and my issue to them was, I can't find an agreement. I asked the solicitor, do we have an agreement for us to be out there? And at that time, Lieutenant Gentile from the state police said he's dealing with this issue. And in fact, here's the section of Title 42. Legally, we can't be out there because the township is not allowed to pick and choose. Well, this municipality can police this section. Uh, and so. Don't we have an agreement with the Water Authority, too, to patrol some of their no. areas? No. The, 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 uh, the city police only did two areas. One was. That yeah, was part of it. I, I, not that I'm aware of. I'm not saying that in the past we didn't, but all that I knew that Hazelton City Police Department did that was outside of the city was the airport and St. Stanislaus Ball Field on 17th and Hayes Street. How about the school? S since then, the high we, school. The high school we don't go to the high school. We don't go there. That's, no. that's the but since place. then, um, we have relinquished any and all authority and responsibility to the state police and every member of the city as well as the state are aware, we won't be taking calls there and 911 will be dispatching, Luzerne County 911 dispatches the state police if any calls come in. Because it's 100% correct. I mean, it, unfortunately, I think years ago, because the city owned it, people thought, oh, the city has to police it. That is, that's not the case. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. John Homer Hazelton, there ha has been a constant nu nuisance about one of the neighbors in the neighborhood where I live, between 3rd Street and Wilbur Court on West 3rd. You name it, you'll find it, I'll put it that way. I, I, uh, garbage galore right by the house. Nobody could ever just walk, uh, walk on the sidewalk. They'd have to go around and uh, it, John, you, it looked send, very ugly. Did you fill out a complaint form at City Hall, like we're supposed to do now? Okay, uh, with that. Fill uh, out one? Uh, okay, uh, uh, where do I f get that done? You can get that at the. Talk to Mike after the meeting. Yeah, no, or you can, you can get one at City Hall, a complaint form, okay. right, Mike? To, uh, or online. Yeah, it's online, online too. It's online They're online too. as well. It's online. Even online? Yeah, yeah. yeah under um, code. It's on the website. Is it hazeltoncity.org? Yes. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I'll do that. Oh. Thank, you. thank you. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Go ahead, Mark. I just have one question and one comment. Um, the comment is uh, I want to thank uh, Lieutenant Leonard for his service and uh, thank him uh, for everything that he did and uh, also that, uh, you know, he never got offended when I told him to rem when I told him to remember his oath. So he's the only officer that I know that never got offended. And uh, the question I have is uh, for the chief, as far as uh, for that Alter Street property that's that burned down, uh, what's going to be done about that? Will there will Act 90 be used to, you know, go after the owner to demolish that property, or what will be done? You know, as far as will it be remediated or rehab? Okay, because it's, you know, in between, it didn't necessarily burn down. It actually is still, like, it burned on the inside, and the adjacent properties are affected by it, so that's why yeah, we'll, we'll, I, we'll I wanted keep, to know. We'll monitor that, Mark. All right, keep on thanks. Top of it. Thanks. Okay, okay. 
Okay. Go Sorry ahead. to have to come here. One, two quick things. Oh, um, the uh, recyclables in the section I live in weren't picked up today, so I don't know if there was a problem or why they, a large portion of the city didn't get their recyclables picked up from uh, about oh, from Maple Street all the way up to uh, Magnolia Street. The oh. recyclable cans were still I'll left there. With, uh, we'll check with Mascaro about it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, because I want to see the city being billed for twice for the same service. And one of the questions. Well, I want to know is about since the city now, the, since the transportation with the city departments, I want to know is the city losing any money from the state that the county is running the shared ride program and it's not the city? Is there a way that the city could get additional state run, m grants money if they were to take over doing the local shared ride program? Is that something we're missing out on or not? Or is that, that something that has to be researched? That's something we'll look into, yeah. Great, we'll I want to bring that up because I think there's a chance that the city could be losing some state money by letting Wilkes-Barre handle that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions? Uh, comments from council? I only got five today, so Go we're ahead. so Go we're ahead. good. Okay. <laughs> First, I want to talk about the, the the parking signs we passed last last month, where the mayor said that it's the law, but he would advise n nobody to buy a sign. So I just wanted to inform those businesses that currently have a sign and at the public that any sign that is not applied for, approved, or paid for will no longer be enforceable, meaning those spaces are available to the public. I don't know why the mayor would tell people to break the law, but Good, yeah. um, I have a concern about the airport. I heard there's a new guy hired up there without consent of council again. We heard that a couple weeks ago. The but, mayor doesn't tell us anything. It's ridiculous. I want to stop over there. But it was brought to my attention that there are people up there driving personal vehicles up and down the runway, <laughs> feeding the animals, driving quads around in the wooded area, and that someone backed a, ve a personal vehicle into a plane causing $38,000 worth of damage. Wow. I, I asked about two months ago to clean the sidewalks along 309, where it's still covered with the anti-skid, and it hasn't been cleaned up yet. It looks like a dump. So I was just wondering if anybody else thought it was time to look for a fixed base operator. I think I, that's a good idea. and I. I think we should look into that, yeah. Did, didn't we get a new manager or something now at There's, the airport that we're not They sure appointed about. somebody, but without counsel. We're not, counsel. the mayor hasn't told us about that. So that's the thing. Then my next one is again the recreation department. I, apparently we have a new head, and they're starting that solo Serenity League. I just, is our insurance going to cover anything with all these? <laughs> New jobs? The, the, the <laughs> illegally pointed. And then I did talk to the city engineer, the CDD engineer today. This contract still was not signed. So I think maybe we have to look at, see if we can get council to approve you to sign it. We've got a it's, lot of, on the to-do list, I guess. Yeah. And then the other problem I have is I asked for a six month to date revenue and expense report from our, again, acting, Director of Administration, and I was told that he will, he does not run special reports. I, I, I'm still waiting for my until. Now, by code, we're entitled to a monthly report, so it's not a right. special. I'm going to take you one step better. You're gonna, so you're gonna, yeah. You'll pick yeah. up on that? Okay, I'm then I won't. Maybe, maybe what we should do is just subpoena him to come here, subpoena him to a council meeting. But, I mean, but not only that, the administrator, that. okay, I'm not sure if he understands this. Under third class city code, we make his duties, all right? I, I, absolutely, that, it's right that, here. That's our responsibility. So maybe we should consider as I asked him, I read, a, I read the ordinance that was passed or the resolution that was passed in uh, 96, I think it was with uh, a previous administration. Four asking him to come to the meetings um, he still has not attended okay maybe now we have to make this part of a, his personnel policy and that he must attend meetings i mean it looks like our, our problem is our cabinet's half filled with appointees uh, appointees that aren't, aren't legal. and i still can't get an answer on what is an exact what is an executive order is there there's such no such a thing, thing as an executive exactly. order exactly is it legal executive so it would be nice if our executive solicitor orders would exist here, on the national level only. that's it yeah would would come here and and so, say this out loud publicly i mean right right now we have no director of public works we have no engineer we have no official director of administration we have no head of the airport, we have no recreation, no head of recreation. and we have no community development engineer. I
think it's a shame. Then he wonders why we're making appointments. But I, I, I'll, I'll stop there for tonight. I just want to thank everybody for coming. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Uh, Dr. Sosa? Yeah, I'm going to pick up on what Jeff just said because the appointments that are occurring in this city are phenomenal, and City Council is being made aware of none of them. Uh, money is being spent in the city of Hazleton, and Lord knows what's happening. We have not had one transfer in the city of Hazleton since January. How in Lord's name are we paying for what goes on in this city? Well, we don't know. We have a TAN note that I read about in the, in the <laughs> Hazleton Standard Speaker that, we, didn't and that we never voted on, we never passed, and I want to know what's going on with that. And as of right now, Lisa, you can send him, and you know exactly the him I'm talking to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. Yanuzi, I want, and Mr. Prabula, I want every so check signed from April, May, and June. I don't want a check register. Today. I want to see, till today, I want to see every check and I want to see who it was written out to and for how much. Okay? That's the way it's going to be. And if he doesn't want to do it, then we'll subpoena him. And, Chief, you better get your cuffs ready because if he doesn't want to obey the subpoena, maybe he can spend some time in jail. All right. We want council to have cuffs. Now. Are you, are you done? Okay, that's all right. Are you done, sir? I think I'm done. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm that. tired of this. I really am. And you know what? He's either going to do a job or he's not going to do the job. And I want the checks. I don't want check register. I want the checks. So now I am so glad that there is now it, somebody else doing moaning besides me. I said about transfers since I'm on council. This will be three years now, okay? I've asked for transfers to come to council. We don't see them, occasionally at the end of the year. I've asked for records from the administrator. Don't see them, all right? There are certain duties that they have to perform and they can't bypass council. We've been bypassed, we've been ignored. Now, the department heads that aren't actually our department heads are ignoring us on top of it all, and this is not gonna continue any longer. We're done. This is why you saw contracts coming back to council. This was one of our duties and our responsibilities that was given away, and it better come back. If he can't appoint an engineer, well then maybe we'll help him along with it. We want the contract signed for Barry Isaac. It was appointed, it was done legally, it should be signed. We have a project that's a major project in our downtown area that needs to be addressed that we're halfway through and we need Barry Isaac to do it so we do not lose our grant money. And we're gonna, I guess we're in the second phase of it right now and it needs to be completed. These games need to stop. He is not doing anything beneficial to the city or to the taxpayers, and we as council, I'm speaking for myself, I'm sure whoever wants to agree with me because this is what I do, are tired of it, and it's not going to happen anymore. Thank you for coming, everybody. I, I just have a couple of things. I agree with my fellow council members. What, you, the mayor just doesn't think we even exist, doesn't, you know, just does whatever he wants to and, and spends money however he wants to, appoints his cousin as our engineer, wants his cousin to be the CD engineer, uh, and he, he just doesn't care about the city of Hazleton. I think people know that. Uh, you know, we have, uh, he sued us and we, ca we, we're, we have uh, uh, our answer to that, and I feel confident we're gonna win that, and. Once we win, we win that case and decide that our budget's the budget that he should be using, which is the way the government works. The way our government works is we come up with the budget. The mayor proposes a budget, but we decide how much money is spent. We decide whether there should be a tax increase. The mayor does it. He can only suggest that. We're the ones that make the laws, 
and he's just not following them at, at this point. And uh, hopefully uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, our case is going to go through and, and uh, maybe a judge, the mayor listening to a judge or a judge telling him what should be done and that, that council has, a, has some rights in this government and they'll make him do what he has to do. Uh, and I feel the frustration of all of council. We, you know, we're, we're trying to do what's right for the city of Hazleton, and the mayor just doesn't care about what's right. He just no, does whatever he wants to do. And uh, hopefully, uh, in the next couple of weeks, a judge will decide, you know, that we're right, and uh, we can maybe uh, move, on. Uh, move forward. Uh, with that, I just want to thank uh, John Leonard and Lieutenant John Leonard, and wish him well in his sure. retirement. He uh, served the city well. Uh, he was a great officer, and I, I hope he enjoys his retirement. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. No meeting. Meeting adjourned. John. <coughs> John. John. Yeah. That uh, complaint form. The Cosmo. Co the complaint little, form. Uh, he could have came. On, but he's, on our website under code enforcement, you'll see complaints. Money. It'll he, be. He could have come, but they're worried now that they're not getting paid. Like, I think it says and departments. And I could understand that. And then I can understand that. a list will come down from all the departments and click on call now. The money. Okay, I think it's on health, too, so either one. It's the same, it was the same form, so it doesn't matter. I, I'm always, okay. yeah, all right. If I'm you can't find it, we'll meet them on council. I'm so glad, I'm so glad. 4986. Okay. okay, okay, if you can't find it. Okay, you're welcome. I'm the... These are the, this is, well, the, the, I don't have the other numbers. I just have Dennis Warren. I just wanted to compare to Dennis Warren. Oh, the email? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what you want, the numbers for okay. For all of them. I'll try to get them together for the next council. Okay, no problem. Okay. Thanks for coming. Oh, the final. Uh, okay. It's awarded to SB. Judy, how you doing? How's your mom? She's cool. Oh. SB and coming. I know that. They should have some common sense.